Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about image overlays and what possible uses you could have for them. Image overlays are simply images that you bring into Google Earth and you overlay them on top of the satellite map that we have here by default. Now you could adapt these overlays for all kinds of purposes. For example, we can use them to draw key line patterns and we have a session on this on this course. So if you're interested, you can go and check it out. You could also create custom legends that you can attach next to any maps that you bring inside of Google Earth. You could also use them to attach custom legends to any maps that you bring inside of Google Earth. And again, we have a session on that in this course, so you can go and check it out. And you could also use them for annotations. For example, I can show you a project now where we made extensive use of image overlays for that exact purpose. So I'm going to enable this project now. Now each of those white things that you see are actual image overlays. They're just very small. And if I zoom in here, now we can see that some of them are still loading, but basically each one of those numbers is a tiny image overlay that accompanies each one of those crosshairs. And the crosshairs mark the position of a plant that is supposed to go in there. So we just attached an image overlay to each of those crosshairs to give that plant a number. Now in this case we have nearly 10,000 of these image overlays, so Google Earth starts to feel the impact of them and you can see how the viewport is a little bit laggy. And this is one of the downsides of image overlays. Even if they are of a very small resolution, but you have many of them, you could still severely degrade the performance of Google Earth. We could have created place marks for each of these crosshairs, and then the associated number for each crosshair would be embedded into the name or the description of the place mark. But place marks have their own downsides, and one of them is that if you were to create a place mark here and attach a name to it, such as this one, let's say we call this tree one or something and press OK on that. And I'm going to turn off these points for a moment. And now we were to zoom out of this place mark. You can see how the icon and the label of the place mark are also scaled in accordance with our level of zoom. Now imagine if you have 10,000 of these, you will not be able to see absolutely anything. And in some cases, the project may require that you provide a screenshot of the actual plan as it is laid out in Google Earth. And so if you have hundreds or thousands of these place marks, you would not be able to actually distinguish one from another because the label is just going to be so big that it's going to stand in the way. And so this is why we ultimately decided to use image overlays for the annotations on this project because we had many thousands of them. And so if we used place marks, it would have been more messy. Now, I believe that this project was also initially conceptualized using image overlays to create the key line patterns that we can see right here. So I believe that these were created using overlay grids and we have covered how to do that on the video on drawing key line patterns using image overlays, so you can check that session out. Now, like I already mentioned, you can use image overlays for your maps, either to import the map itself or to attach custom legends for it. For example, here we have a slope map and the map itself was created inside of QJS and then simply imported out as a georeferenced GeoTIFF so that it was automatically overlaid inside of Google Earth, but it's still an image overlay. If I right click on the slope map and go under its properties, you can see that we can still move it around and scale it and so on. Now equally important to the map is the legend that allows us to read it and understand it. And to my knowledge, there is no GIS application that can create these legends and automatically bring them into Google Earth. This is something that you have to do manually. Now this legend is just another image overlay. So if I go under its properties, we can see that we can still move it around and scale it and so on. All of this was created by hand inside of Photoshop, but you can also use other graphics applications like GIMP, for example. And it was then exported out as an image in a PNG file format with a transparent background. And then it was brought into Google Earth as an image overlay and simply positioned into place and scaled to the desired size. Both of these images were then placed in the same folder called slope. And then that folder was saved out as a KMZ and shared with the client. Now, it is important to send it out as a KMZ and not a KML because KML files cannot contain images, but KMZ files can do that since they are an archived form of KML. So whenever you are saving out data from Google Earth that contains images, whether those are 
image overlays or images attached to any files such as photos then it is best to save those out as a kmz because then everything is contained in the same file throughout this program we are going to look at different ways by which we can use image overlays throughout this program we are going to cover different ways by which we can use image overlays including all of the ways that i already mentioned in this video for now i think that this covers it for a basic overview of image overlays but i hope to share a lot more with you in the next sessions so thank you for watching and see you in the next video